Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. It's, I forgot what day today is, uh, May 23rd, uh, 2021. My name is Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that would make me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. And welcome to Cubs Out Live, the Bear Podcast, Visitor Terminal Links, episode number uh, 602. Uh, because we're in the 600s now. Oh my gosh. I'm still. Like, yep, 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 yep. Wow. Um, and to, to, today, uh, we're doing a thing. Let's talk about sex. Gary, what specifically are we talking about? Uh, for this week's episode in the series of Let's Talk About Sex, we're going to talk about people who get paid. Oh. For being adults. Oh. For adulting. In a digital media. Ah. Uh. <laughs> cute. Real cute. So we're, gonna, <laughs> we're just going to have a little gab session about uh, just for fans and only fans. Um, as a little bit of a preface, so the COVID-19 pandemic last year in 2020 shifted the world economy in serious ways. Uh, prior to the global pandemic, the landscape of self-promotion as an artist was already taking off in the digital realm. So this isn't something that happened because of the pandemic, but it helped. Mm -hmm. um, social media platforms like Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube um, have already risen kind of to the top of the field. Um, however, those entities, um, they tend to expend a lot of effort time and energy to limit access or to outright remove adult content mm -hmm. um, and i think it's out of their own legal protective interests so then we end up with sites like xtube having recently taken actions to limit their adult content creator options um so you know we have the tumblr exodus we sort of have the xtube thing and we get did to the some of that. Day, which is, yeah. which is weird and, because Pornhub and Nextube are part of the Pornhub network. Yeah, that's, that whole thing has still hasn't been sorted out. But all of those, I think, were factors leading up to now it's 2021. And over the past year, it appears that the broader LGBTQIA community has become more familiar and, may I say, perhaps comfortable mm -hmm. um, with sites like just for dot fans and onlyfans.com as platforms where you know you can personally kind of be free to uh have your content ho homed or housed or whatever you want to call it held where you can you know express body positivity and sexual expression you know artistic uh kind of modeling and, and more so I kind of wanted to wait until we were on the other side so to speak of of the pandemic only because I'm curious to see what the future holds, but we've gotten to this point mm -hmm. and, you know, in the past, Hadrian had said, I think repeatedly a couple of times that, you know, the whole adult entertainment industry has been flipped around when it first started. The only way you could get content was if someone produced it and they had to have a big chunk of money mm -hmm. like, to have the equipment, to get the actors and the location. I mean, and it was very like um, low budget meaning like not everyone was rolling in the money for it. So they were like shooting it with home, you know, eight millimeter cameras and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all sorts of stuff. And then eventually that grew and technology came along, but a technology eventually reached the point where any of us could create our own content and put it out there. 
And that's kind of where we are now. Yeah. So with the proliferation of people being able to create their own content and these websites that are theoretically viewed as made for this. Mm -hmm. And I know that I've seen, especially on Twitter, the rise of people saying, I have an OnlyFans. Like, you can just subscribe. I've got this much, like, this many spots left with this discount. (laughs) (laughs) And I'll be honest, I purged a lot of those people. Um, uh, Let me uh, explain a little further. If you annoyed me with your with your OnlyFans shit, <laughs> I just stopped following you, like, I, I, okay. and or and or blocked you, and depending on like how bad it was. Because some people seriously seven days a week, if not multiple times a day, and I was like, Fair. Well, that, that's yeah. an awful lot of effort, and I don't have time to ignore that. Well, like, and it, it keeps coming up over and over again. It, that ends up being it's more of a promotional account versus a personal Twitter account. That's True. what they're. It, as, that's how they're using it. Right. True. And it's been interesting. I'll put it like this. Um, so when the just for fans and only fans kind of started happening, I was like, oh, that's a good idea and I pause because I was like well now everyone's going to want to do it well not everyone but you know what I mean like everybody's going to throw up there and that's kind of what is happening is anyone and everyone that wants to make a little coin or make a lot of coin depending on how popular you are um, is joining the OnlyFans just for fans is my guy like those kind of things. And it's becoming very saturated. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm not, I'm all about what it does in mm-hmm. a sense. If you, you're, you essentially own your own content you can put what you want on there. You can make your own things. You can have kind of like the YouTube, not the YouTube, excuse me, the X tubes of the day. Well, YouTube's too, in a sense where you could like, put it like show a video of you like holding the camera while you're fucking a guy like kind of like awkwardly holding this phone and put it up on xtube as maybe an amateur and maybe get some money Mm -hmm. this one you're kind of doing the same thing but you get like subscribers and you pay a certain amount it's it's basically along the lines of the patreon method where Uh, you're 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 subscribing to this mm-hmm. person, uh, paying them monthly, or you know, I think they've got like for if you set it up that way, I suppose uh, you could like pay for six months in advance or something like that. Um, but it's it's the difference between like YouTube monetization versus Patreon subscription. Cause yeah, I mean, I agree, Jeff, that it's a, it's a subscriber model, so it is very similar in a way to, to Patreon. I don't recall offhand. I don't think there's tiers on these platforms. Yeah, it doesn't it that, doesn't go it? much further than a subscription fee. But right, so like, so it, let's say like David wanted to create an OnlyFans account, he would decide how much that is like. And then it's up to him to produce that content and people have to be willing to pay the price for whatever the content is. Mm -hmm. So I've watched some review videos of, uh, shocking, uh, RuPaul's drag race contestants who have created only fans. So this one individual went and paid like for a one month subscription and did a several, like a handful of videos, like describing what was in, each of the only fans they didn't show any of the content they just verbally described it and even then they weren't really being graphic although it was quite comical um <laughs> well because to see someone's reaction because they were like they were like oh and there's a wow okay <laughs> like i mean reactions like that which i thought was part of the entertainment of watching the review on youtube um but my understanding is like there's only one price so to speak and then obviously the mm-hmm. platform gets a cut And, you know, then the the content creator, the one that posts it, you know, gets however much. So I don't know if it's like a 80, 20, 70, 30 
60 40 90 10 i have no idea what the split is um yeah so i mean i i i'm okay with the the platform the premise the concept um i appreciate that we in theory have empowered adult entertainment individuals to like have control because as it's been discussed you know these entertainment companies um and i don't know if it's really true now but there was a time where people really felt like there wasn't just there wasn't appropriate pay mm-hmm. for the content but it, I, it's so dicey because it's like we we talked years ago about how like so much stuff would just get pirated and then reposted online mm-hmm. you know so it's like why would i bother to go to titan men or stocky dudes or i mean pick whatever you know uh-huh, entertainment uh-huh. company to watch their stuff and then just to turn around and be like oh like i can just watch it for free because it's over here yeah um, like that was one of the things i will admit was the problem i had with like places like Pornhub and xtube and what have you whatever some of them some of the videos were like here's the preview now go buy it which i think is fair like if you <laughs> you know you want to entice someone, you want to show them what you got, you yeah, show trailers. a little. Yeah. Uh, but then I would suddenly find on the site. X usually the same site. Uh, <laughs> yeah, usually the same site, like the full feature link video or the scene that they you know captured, the 20, 30 minute scene or not 20, 30, <laughs> 10, 20, you know, <laughs> minute scene. And it was. And obviously that was like, you would like look and you would see that that's not from the creator. It's probably from someone who bought it, maybe bought it or found it and, you know, ripped it down from the internet and then pushed it back up. And I agree. I, we, I think Hadrian has mentioned it before. Like that's not really fair to the people who created the entertainment, the actors that did it, any of that, you mm-hmm. know, because that's something that they created um and again it's tricky um especially now because you know believe it or not you know now people are making their own thing so how are they being protected how well can they protect themselves now obviously they can you can throw the little um um watermark or whatever on a photo and maybe throw your little like link in the in the in the corner of a video or whatever but you know someone can very easily like i'm subscribed to such and such and here's his videos let me mm. download it because i'm pretty sure you can download them i don't know for sure nope. but if you could download them maybe you can't Good. I, I think it depends on the security of the platform if they're using an older code technology mm-hmm. like i used to do this professionally um, mm-hmm. In a previous career, clients wouldn't be able to give us their media. They were like, well, we don't have a way to... And I'm like, oh, for the love of everything, it's on your fucking website. So <laughs> I would just find hidden in the code where the asset file was and then save it to my desktop. And finally, <laughs> I suddenly have your damn commercial. So, <laughs> so much faster than waiting for yeah. them to, well, we'd have to see if we could put, upload it and then give you access or burn it to a DVD. I'm like, oh, for the love of everything, it's digital media, people. Like, but I'm always <laughs> dealing with people who don't, they have, like, you know, no idea. Yeah. It's a creative. Somebody else made it. I don't know yeah. anything. I don't yeah, know okay, anything cool. about it. Yeah. Mm. And I think get that's a, get out of my way. Of, yeah. And that's sort of the, <laughs> the good and bad thing, the positive and negative about like people making their own stuff. It's like you're, you're making your own stuff, so it's yours. Mm. And that's great. Um, you don't have to go through a, you know, media, like producer or ma- um, porn company or whatever and and do your thing. Mm. But for the persons like us who are watching, per se, I think that's sort of the other flip of the coin is – it's probably not going to be as well produced. It's probably not going to be as well made. If that's your thing that gets you going, like the amateur, amateur porn kind of feel, mm-hmm. then you're good to go. Because most of the time, there's usually like a camera, like a phone, maybe a couple of you know 
cameras and phones like set off the side so they can get different angles. I've seen some people kind of get that far into it. Um, but then there's a matter of like, then you got to edit it and then, you know, re put it, you know, put it back together and bring it out there. And that's fun. That's great if you have those skills. Right. But if you don't have those skills, then you're kind of relying on your one camera and hoping that you catch it, you know, <laughs> catch the whole thing. But then it's up to you. Like, if I get a video, like, if I fuck this dude and, like, the camera has fallen, like, halfway through and, all, you know, the cum shot, like, no one, you hear it, but you don't see it. Like, am I going to put that up? I've seen people that will, but, like, that's up to you. Is that going to get enough views? Is it going to be good for you? Is that going to work? Like, that's fine. Um, the main concern I think I've always had with OnlyFans those that are on OnlyFans, those that are on like Just for Fans and such, is um, I want I guess I'll say quality is like, mm. is it going to be? Yeah, that's not bad. Is it going to be worth it? Is it going to be worth it? You know, am I going to enjoy it? Um, if I start watching these videos and and look at stuff and see this one camera angled um, moment. Um, maybe I might. There's some I've seen because, um, you know, they're all over Twitter. Like a lot of people have them on Twitter. A lot of OnlyFans. A lot of, a lot of them. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm not like you, Gary. I, some of them I will I have like I won't say block some, but I have like unprinted a few because I'm just like I really don't need to hear this or see these every day like two three times a day seven days a week of you like promoting your shit like right. i get it you've got an only fans i get it you've got a dress for fans that's great can you can you give me something else right how are you doing how are you mama like like, <laughs> like well give me some- but that, but that I mean that that goes to like kind of speak to something though. It's like, do you want to know them as as a human being, as a person, or do you just want to objectify them? Like, are they just a hole or a dick to you? Because mm. like then then you know that you know then I it isn't necessary, I guess, if if you know you're just looking for that um, True. that ability to get off, you know, to to whatever that thing is, and not necessarily connect with the person. You know that they have a, a job and life and all the rest of that stuff. So I don't know. Um, I mean, for me, as far as like uh, what we think about the development of this stuff, like I'm all f- for it. Like I think it's good. I'm hoping that we don't get you know a crackdown on this shit um, mm-hmm. because yeah. you know people are frightened of sex. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, I don't know if there's enough support for it and the reason i say it that way is if i was a giving person like if i had expendable income and wanted to be supportive of all the people that i really like and i believe in bitch like that that's a paycheck more than a paycheck (laughs) like every month watching all this money just go right out the window because i'm supporting you know like a dozen people you know with all their content or whatever so i mean it it does work in some ways i'm just wondering if there will come a point where people are like "Mm, yeah, you know, I don't, I don't have, I don't have that much flexibility yeah. to spend, you know, three to ten dollars or however much it is, yeah. per month, you know. Like I had, I've, I've wanted to support some people because I, 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 more so than anything else, I like what they can do, and they're hot. So whatever. Um, I mean, I'm subscribed to one guy, um, one guy that I'm sure Gary would really appreciate. Westcom. Huh? Uh, okay, so uh, let's let's talk uh, about West Cup for a moment. <laughs> Here's the thing, um, West Cup's a hottie. I I would like to meet him in person and you know get to know. Him. He seems to have a really good personality. I know a bunch of people that know him. They all like love him and speak highly of him. You know, he's been going through a whole bunch of things the past couple of years. You know, like all of us have. But I don't really know if I need to pay because nothing against Wes. Hey, Wes, if you're listening, call me um, <laughs> or text me or something. But here's the thing. I see it everywhere. That's, that's so like, yeah. there's not a lot left of the imagination. Like, I've seen you. What like, was I, I going to where was I going to post 
he posted somewhere today and I was like going to comment, but then I realized that like the comment was open or whatever, like public global. And I was like, Ooh, no, I'm not, I'm not commenting mm-hmm. on that. Cause, cause he commented something about, um, you know, want to help daddy get off of the truck or whatever. And I was going to make a comment and then I was like, no, I'm just it's not necessary at this moment, mm-hmm. but you know, it's like, so that's where I'm like, I'm kind of, I kind of see a lot already. Like, so <laughs> I've seen a lot of you. Like I've seen your front, I've seen your back, I've seen you naked, I've seen you clothes, I've seen you sweaty, I've seen you top, bottom, verse, I've seen you like massage, I've seen you this, I've seen you that, I've seen I've seen I've seen you. I've seen you indoors, I've seen you outdoors. I've yeah. seen you on top on of things beach. and underneath things. Mm-hmm. And you know I've seen you I've seen you pissing, I've seen you this and I'm seeing that and I've seen you coming. And I'm like, yep, 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 yep. I have seen all of you, a lot of you. The only thing I technically haven't seen, like, is you in person, like, <laughs> and, right? Yeah, you know, but I mean, so, again, yeah. And so that's that brings me, up an interesting point, ahead. David. Like, it, like, is that are we talking about an example of somebody who's overexposed? So perhaps people don't really feel it's necessary to be supportive as a membership because they can pretty much see everything anyway. That's, that's a good. Question. And what about new content? I mean, he. I'm sure he's doing new content, but he also, like, posted in a lot of different places. It doesn't take much or long to find stuff he's done. I mean, and he's not shy. Like, that's the other thing. Like, Wes mm-hmm. is not shy. Kudos to you. I, I love it because, like, you, you, like, every every inch of you I have pretty much seen in some way or another. <laughs> so, Wes, if you're listening, don't call Gary, call me. <laughs> look, look, just call all three of us. <laughs> really? Really? Yeah. See, those two are having a fight over him. I want to share. Ah, uh, no, I was Can't joking. That's just kind of shady. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's totally meant to be shady. Anyway, um, but yeah, like, I is it is it too much? I don't know. Like, there's a part of me that thinks like I will. I will admit um, I haven't yet, but I he's on my list of people that when I get comfortable financially. If he's still doing a um, OnlyFans, just for fans, whatever, um, I would subscribe. Not because I necessarily need to see his content, because I can see it everywhere else, but I would subscribe as a support to him because I know everything that he has gone through with everything like in California and shit. Um, so, um, again, though. But reality is, I'm not looking at that him for his content more as as a friendship. Well, not friendship, but you know, like a a support for him right. um, as a person. Um, well, that that kind of brings up like this question: like, how much have these options, these platforms, um, helped people financially? let's say through the more than the past year, like prior to the pandemic, I don't think as many people were paying attention. I mean, like, you know, these, these platforms are out there and some people were doing it, but what I saw mostly was so more celebrity level individuals. Mm. Um, and, and by celebrity, I don't mean like Hollywood, like big celebrity, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, yeah. like, you know, C list, D list, whatever. <laughs> um, whatever yeah. category they might be given so uh and then you know ev- people who were professionals in the adult you know industry and then as the pandemic came uh and people didn't have jobs uh because they couldn't work I, I that's what i started noticing was a proliferation like more and more and more people were like i guess i'm gonna give this a try let me know mm-hmm. if you're interested hey i'm thinking about doing a thing you know like i saw lots and lots and, and then even that kind of just shifted to guess what guess what platform i'm on here's my link here's my like you know not even like making people coyly kind of you know provide feedback if somebody wanted to be involved so mm. i can't like i personally can't gauge if i think it's 
helped in the majority of situations. That's fair. Like, well, I, would, I, I, I think it can be just considered as part of a, a moving of platform. You know, it's like the whole X tube hullabaloo, and then people be like, "Okay, I need something that's a little more reliable." Well, this this new site is not associated with X tube, <laughs> and um, may I, I haven't actually like gone through any sort of process or anything to to like see about what setting one up would be, but maybe they have a a way of uh, having like identifications for mm. like like you prove your age sort of thing or something you know yeah. it, it, stuff that x2 because of its legacy um mm -hmm. because uh, systems never really had that it's like anybody could sign up for an x2 big channel technically yes yeah it's <sighs> right, but whether or not people are supportive of you in that platform, I think, is a whole other. There are some people like on OnlyFans which have a subscribe for free option. Yeah, I'm subscribed to a couple of them. Huh. Um, you know, people can are are just using the platform for the sake of the platform. And I, if I remember in the early days, not early days, that sounds bad, <laughs> but it's fair. Early days of the platform, I think even Hadrian had put himself up there and put all of his content out for free. And I don't know if this was only fans or just for fans, one or the other, but they eventually told him he couldn't do it anymore unless he was paying, like having people pay for it. I don't know if it was because he had so many people that were looking or subscribed or whatever that he, they, they wanted the money. <laughs> Like the the, the mm. only fair that just friends wanted the money or what, um, which I think might be fair, but I would I can't remember what it, what happened with that one. Um, he eventually, you know, I think he that's when he moved to um, Twitter for a while. Um, but you know, he can he can tell the story. You know, next time we have him on, wink. Um, but uh. uh I have some people that are on there for free and there are other accounts, um, more celebrity ish accounts that are free. Like as I look at my, um, page, there's a, um, DJ Collin and fat Joe, um, have a free only fans. I, I doubt they're doing anything naughty. <laughs> um, but, mm -hmm. They're probably like promoting their music or showing, you know, photos of stuff that they're doing or whatever, you know, probably meant to be a promotional um, site kind of along the lines of hell, like the MySpace of the day, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but. Yeah. And, and for those, you know, that don't know, like you can use OnlyFans and Desperate Fans for like art and music and 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 right. and non-sexual things we tend to see it more often as a sexual thing but for the most part it I well, went not for the most part I'm sure overall like people are using it for other things Okay, this is taking a really long ass time to scroll. So what I've been trying to do in my Twitter is go back to find the one person that I know has actually posted in regards to their OnlyFans and said like, "Hey, this really worked. I was able to pay my rent this month," or mm. something like that. And I was like, "Okay, well, that's a thing." Um, it's just bugging me that I can't get back to their last post, which is weird. I don't know why. Granted, I'm just scrolling and not actually looking them up because I can't remember their actual online name because uh, I'm a bad follower that way, apparently. So, yeah, I mean, uh, I think there's potential for it. I just don't know how much it really assists people. Now, I will say in terms of like monetary platform stuff, the one thing I have noticed that's gone down 
or maybe it's because I blocked all those people, um, <laughs> is I haven't seen as much like, hey, I really need help. So I'm starting a like fundraising mm-hmm, campaign, mm-hmm. like uh, GoFundMe or what's the other one? There's two or three like for medical stuff. Uh, specifically. Um, Kickstarter. No, mm-hmm. no, not Kickstarter. Not Kickstarter. Yeah, but it's the same concept like as yeah. far as platforms go. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so like I find that interesting that i don't see that as much but maybe that really kind of calmed down because no offense everybody was in a hell hole last year you know so mm-hmm. it's like nobody gonna be able to really help too many other yeah. people because I, I don't recall you know the top billionaires in the u.s just suddenly parting with their increased income heaven forbid but yeah it i see it as a a quick way to potentially make money, especially if you are um, either a like already kind of a sexual person and you have that persona online, mm-hmm. you know, just kind of giving it out there, or b you are naturally attractive. I'm and I'm just I'm being I'm being vain as fuck on this thing when I'm saying things like that because I feel like that is. But it can come down to, you know, if Joe Schmo down the street, like, wants to put up an OnlyFans and make some money to pay his rent, maybe he might get lucky and there's enough people that maybe find him, you know, interesting or attractive enough to subscribe for a bit. But I doubt he's going to get that much as much attention as say the Atlas Grant, you know, Dirk uh, Kaber, you know, you know, the porn actors that have their own, you know, that have their own OnlyFans that are putting on their own content, that kind of thing. The, mm-hmm. the Colby. Colby Jensen. Jensen. Yeah. Like those kind of people, like, People who I will say, I guess we'll say people who have made a, a, you know, name for themselves through porn and then are now making their own stuff either alongside that or instead of that. It's very yeah, I, I, it's definitely, you know, you bring up a good point, Damon, kind of earlier. And, and with that, I'm thinking about, like, how fair is it? What, what kind of resources do you have available to you? What what mm-hmm. kind of content would you be able to create? Um, yeah. yeah, so I, I don't know how much that's possible for people. Mm-hmm. Um, and I agree with you. Like, like there is different, you know, levels of production. Um, you know, some people, I'm really surprised by the content that they make because I was like, bitch, like... Hmm? how many goddamn lights you got in your bedroom or whatever. I mean, you know, like you could just kind of tell that things are very well lit and there's lots of camera angles and some close up shots. Like it's kind of obvious that like, you know, you're being very intentional with how you're like, you know, Mm. capturing and recording this moment for others to enjoy. Um, And I agree with you. Like, you know, there's, there's some difference in what the potential is of, you know, what people could enjoy. Uh, if it's minimal budget content, I don't know how else to phrase it. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, you know, like you said, the phone is propped up against, you know, the lube bottle on the nightstand. And, <laughs> and you know. <laughs> oh, wait, maybe this is better. <laughs> okay. But no, that's, that, that's, that's kind of, that's kind of what it is. I mean, not, I'm not saying that's, all it is because there are there are people who are out there making their own stuff and we know them we know they're out there i mean and that's great if you can make your own content and and sell your wares as it were you know online um and these kind of platforms these sites are great for that to kind of help the regular person potentially do that maybe you don't have um experience building and and are maintaining a website uh so you 
rely on another another platform to help you with that. And they just happen to get a little bit on the side. Well, not on the side, but uh, up front, you know, as part of that agreement, you know, you sell mm-hmm. a subscription for six bucks, they get a dollar or two and you get the rest. So be it like it's something. It's, and... it's the American dream. <laughs> Capitalism at now, work. Now, I would love to know, and if there are, I mean, anyone hearing this or watching this, if you know of someone that is a, for lack of a better phrase, successful, like able to maintain consistent work just by doing this, I would love to know that. I would think that this is, for the most part, these sites are supplemental stuff. Yeah, and I agree. And for Christ's um, sakes, people, when you're, when you're filming with a phone, make sure you're doing it on landscape, not vertical. <laughs> well, I mean, it kind of depends. I, I, I don't disagree that it should be landscape, but there are some times where vertical may be like the best advantage and, and i'm not expecting to watch something that lasts very long <laughs> if it's going to be that um one i'm thing. going to ignore anything that's under five minutes oh, oh well, no. that's on you um yeah i was gonna say that's that's a that's a you thing jeff like which is fine but, but trust me most most of the time when people are watching these videos and how the video is set up on the site in landscape and most of the time if you're on a site you can probably turn the video around um let me just pull up yeah, if you're watching the video it. on a phone usually people could just turn their phone so mm-hmm. i don't uh, come on let's see who am i what is there um, this is really annoying me that I've been scrolling for quite a while and I can't find this individual. And I kind of know what their post is going to look like when it comes up. Like, what the fuck? Must have been a really long time ago. Or you've got a long feed. Well, hmm. well or as I say, there's a lot of people posting a lot of things. And so it just kind of takes a while to come back around. Yeah. Like, I have... One person who I randomly found on Twitter, through Twitter, that I am following on um, OnlyFans, and they post random videos of themselves, or their friends, and sometimes it's free, sometimes it's something where they they do, it does cost to unlock the video. So, okay. no, I don't know, that's not going to be Facebook, that's not appropriate. Um so you could have a free subscription, subscription, but then they can make premier or exclusive content that you have to pay for to yeah. get access to. So I'm going to try to do this. There we go. Without giving away who it is, but like, so unlock it for $10. I think that's what that says. Yeah. Unlock post. And it's, you know, it's be he, the person that I know is because it's two other people that also have, only fans accounts so they're probably cross promoting the video and if i can get it for free on his site and not pay for and not pay for it the other two then what's the point of me getting it so right you know makes sense i thought uh, maybe you're somewhere else must be somewhere else. it's a complex monetary structure well, I, that's the, you know, again, there are things I would love to know again about it, like how much of the subscription, how much of your cost are you getting? How much of the fee are you getting? Like if a subscription is $5, like how much of that do you actually get? Are they taking 10% or are they taking 20%? You know, I guess I could look it up, but most... Most accounts take home less than one hundred and forty-five dollars per month. Mm. Yeah, I had I had seen that there was kind of that like posting that you know people aren't necessarily making all that much off of it, 
which always begs the question because then some people are like, I'm in the top, you know, 0.5% of all like OnlyFans or whatever. And I'm like, okay, is that like Good based on you. the popularity, like the amount of subscribers, how much money you're bringing in, how much content you're making? Like, how exactly is that measured? Mm-hmm. Because honestly, I kind of don't care. But the fact that it's a it's a marketing point, I'm like, so what's the what's the magic behind that? You know, marketing. How do how do we determine that? So, thing? so would you like um, some statistics that I found on uh, influencermarketinghub.com for sure. OnlyFans? <clears throat> so OnlyFans has uh, about one million plus content creators. Mm-hmm. There's 7,000 to 8,000 uh, new content creators per day uh, as of the time of this wow. posting, which uh, was uh, April 26th. 50 million registered users, 500,000 new users per day, plus or minus 15 million new users per month. OnlyFans takes a 20% cut of its users' transactions. There we go. Wait, how much? 20%. 20%. Okay. So one fifth. Average mm-hmm. average so, earnings for OnlyFans is is one hundred and eighty dollars per month. That's on mm-hmm. average. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh top one percent of accounts make thirty three percent of the money. Mm-hmm. Most most accounts take home less than one hundred and forty five dollars per month, as I said. Uh, a creator known by the name of Bella Thorne earned more than one million dollars in her first twenty-four hours. Wow! Uh, there, the there's a hundred dollar cap on paid private messages. OnlyFans has paid out more than two billion dollars to creators. Uh, at OnlyFans has. 415,200 Twitter followers and at OnlyFans has 2,974 LinkedIn followers. Believe it or not, they're on LinkedIn. The OnlyFans official uh, uh, Facebook page is liked by 77,975 people. OnlyFans profit uh, trebled between Trump troubled i'm not exactly sure what that means uh between 2018 and 2019 uh their business alexa rank and this isn't like amazon alexa uh is 463 so yeah the the only fans information is kind of easy to find and the reason i say that is before we were when I was setting up the doc for this, I was looking online just to have some background. And just for dot fans, the website has like no real information to go off of. And there's nothing really much posted out there about like the history of the company and the background and like all this different kind of stuff, which I find intriguing. Um, OnlyFans is a little bit easier. So I don't know if that means that OnlyFans is bigger, more well known. People actually care. I don't mm. know. Um, so what I what I'm curious about is do you guys think that this is kind of like a, a natural evolution for society where we kind of struggle between conservative and progressive like mindsets or viewpoints or camps or whatever you want to call it? Because like the the reason I ask is I feel like that's really what the struggle always seems to be about. Like giving people freedoms and opportunities and other people saying, nope, that's too much freedom. That's too much opportunity. Like, you know, think of the children or, you know, some thing that is used as a statement as to why we have to curb this behavior, modify this like opportunity, whatever it may be. Mm. I just like, I'll, I'll, I'll put it, simply there's nothing okay there's no way to get to this content without subscribing and signing up for it and then that's fine but like and even then 
unless you have actually paid for someone, for the most part, you're not going to be able to see it. So to me, there's a couple of blinders up or barriers up to where thick of the children bullshit won't really matter. Like, if, if your child mm-hmm. can get on the site and then make an account and then get to someone that they can see all their naughty bits of, which, yes, there are some that are free, but for the most part, most people are locked down. Like, right. if you go to their page and you're not a subscriber, it's blurred out and they've got a lock and you've got to say, you spend this money. Now, maybe some older, underage people might be able to, you know, finagle their way around it and get to it, but they're going to see it anyway. If they really wanted to, they would see it. Like, that's kind of the point. Like, All right. I don't disagree with you. That echoes a lot for me with in, in terms of work because – like one of the things that is always a struggle for us is so like, it, for example, our clinic rooms that like we're going to be, you know, resuming clinic here shortly. So we have a TB clinic, we have immunizations, we have STI um, and, you know, these three different areas use the exact same clinic room. So there's been like, I guess, this undiscussed war between them because Emmy has small children that comes in and so they don't want all the all the safe sex stuff out and mm. the whole sti team's like y'all realize how babies are made right <laughs> like you know but the the issue is is that parents feel uncomfortable because they don't know how to answer their kids questions like what's a condom or whatever and it's like all right, I get it. Like, you might have small children, and they're there to get shots, and that isn't necessarily the intention. But, like, scrubbing a room of this content, quote-unquote, because it makes you uncomfortable, mm. like, because you don't know how to address it with the, with parents or whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. Like, yeah, So it, yeah. it echoes to me, you know, kind of what you're saying about, um, you know, people mm-hmm. – wanting to restrict things and at the same time like damon you point out like there's already structures in place to kind of keep the accessibility limited yeah Yeah. Yeah, but i I just i I just kind of wonder like to me uh, personally in answer to my own question i do think this is a natural evolution i think it was just bound to happen that at some point every single person who has technology has the ability to self-promote whatever it is i mean Theoretically, I mean, look at the landscape. Most people know, I, I'm going to go out on a limb, most people know what Etsy is, mm-hmm. you know, as an online platform for content creators, but it's all craft, like individuals, people who, who are makers. So they make art, they make jewelry, they make things for your home, you know, they, they modify things, so on and so forth. They can do stuff that's custom. I mean, you know, it's, and, it, and it's not necessarily adult. But it's a whole, like, kind of part of that, um, I don't know what we want to call that. Like, is that, like, a micro-economy, I guess? Like, mm. the ability to, like, kind of, like, hey, I have a talent, I'm going to promote it, and I'm going to make some money off of it. So I'm going to have a 1099, yada, yada, you know? It's like, okay, so you make Christmas ornaments, sorry, holiday ornaments, um, you know, or, you know, make, you know, art or whatever, and this person over here, you know, they you know, put big gaping things into their booty hole. <laughs> you know, it's it's creating it's content that thing. people are interested in. Well, I wouldn't no. know if I would say it's the same. <laughs> no, I, I see your point. Like, it's all... It's all content. It's all... Well, it's all art. Let's put, I'll make it that well, kind of... Yeah. It, it, I mean, there, there's a difference between content creation and being a maker. Because maker, you're making True. stuff. While yeah. content is... Something to entertain the masses. Well, I, it's, what, it's, could, what there, could debate that when you're when you're jerking that you're making stuff? I mean, the end result is typically stuff appears. Yeah, but the but you're the people aren't getting physical the physical item that you are producing. <laughs> well, I mean, they could. <laughs> you probably pay extra for that. You might yeah. have to pay extra for that. I'm sure there are people that will gladly sell like a a a, a cum soap t shirt for thirty forty bucks, and people will drip if depending on the. Person I mean that's again. true, but it, or I mean, jocks or underwear, boxers, boots, socks, sneakers, 
I've seen dang near anything. Yeah, but do you find anybody that has an Etsy store with that stuff? And I well, have no, to say that stuff probably, must be inexpensive because of uh, it's not that easy to make. You have to buy the buy the item first, and then you have to produce the additional accoutrement. Um, well, I mean, uh, I don't know shipping. what the platforms are, but Jeff, your point is well taken that, yes, <laughs> technically Etsy wouldn't allow that, but that's probably because it goes against Etsy's terms of service. Yes. That being said. I think a lot of that stuff that we were just discussing is more on a one-to-one relationship because I don't know of the adult eBay version where you can just go online and be like, oh, I want to buy a jockstrap from this person and I want it like, you know, uh, uh, you know, come soak, you know, uh, rag from this individual and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like, I think it's very much a, a one-to-one kind of thing. But I do know, like, especially in those items where, like, there's been a DNA, like, donation, um, there's a lot of the times if you send the item to them along with compensation, they will then send back to you the thing is. So you're in theory, not only are you buying the item, you are also paying the shipping for two ways, and all of that is commensurate for a certain fee. So mm. like, then know, that is a service dollars or whatever. I'm providing a service. Yeah. I'm providing great customer service. Are you satisfied with my service? It's, um, it's com, <laughs> cups, comes to customer, comes to <laughs> oh, He's service. trying so hard to make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying, uh, I, I will not claim that I was succeeding. <laughs> I just realized, David, you really are wearing the best shirt for today. <laughs> <laughs> so for those that are listening, he's wearing our... Now that we're sticky, here's your cookie <laughs> shirt. <laughs> I so I so for those that, so pre so like everyone that knows I I came I got home a little later than I was planning, and I will oh my original intention I was literally gonna come I had a t-shirt on underneath my um course like like shirt and I was like I'm just gonna throw the pull the core shirt off and then throw the t-shirt on. Well, I got home and I was like you know what. I think I have something that would be more appropriate for this episode. <laughs> I, so I made my way upstairs and 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 grabbed the shirt because I I I knew I was running late anyway, and I was like, "Fuck it, I'm already late." So I as well just be a little bit more late. <laughs> I mean, you're gay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> better to be, better to be late than unfashionable. Mm. <laughs> See, I almost wore the sloppy bottom shirt, but I was like, I've been wearing that a lot recently, so. <laughs> People might be getting some ideas. No, I just don't like want to keep wearing the same thing over and over and over again. How <laughs> dare had, you? They, <laughs> for the record, for the record, they had Mary, the idea even before you had the shirt. Has not been sloppy <laughs> ever. <laughs> I mean, there was one time where it could have been, but anyways. Oh, but memory. Anyways. Wow. Ah, uh, memories. This, All right, this sounds like there are wrapping up. Memories maybe in know. a lifetime that people want to repeat, but this is one of them. I will tell you that much. Uh oh. <laughs> it, it, it was a good I time. Think I guess. Of it. Now every now and then. Yeah. Yeah, so it was a good. It was a good time for everyone involved, and and great time for everyone involved. Right. 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 I. I. Left. I. I mean, right. I was quite pleased at the end. <laughs> uh, I think they were as well. And he were they. I think, yeah. So I, we noticed it's day. So it's more than it's more than one. Um, hello, we live in the in the age of pronouns. Like, oh, fine, 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 <laughs> fine, Gary. Fine. Fine. Drews and Hardy Boys over there are like trying <laughs> to like make it that isn't necessarily true. <laughs> Based off of your 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 uh, uh, based off of your context the context clues, they sounds like the plural meaning the plural they not the gender uh, or the non gender specific pronoun singular pronoun. So that's it. Uh uh uh. Anyway, just, not say, just because that's happened does not mean that you know 
suddenly a new nickname or a nickname would would be appropriate in that you, case. Uh, quick, so quick comment. Saying, uh, yes, I did. I did. I did find that the just for fans cut was was thirty percent versus OnlyFans twenty oh. percent. Interesting. Ooh. That might be why OnlyFans is more popular or more well known. Possibly. Yeah. I'm always curious. I wonder if I can find this site. It's my guy. Let's see. It's not as it's it's if I remember correctly, it is not as well known. Mm. It's I also my guy think with... just for fans just sells clips while OnlyFans does subscriptions. Mm. Interesting. Come on. Are you not it's a different hurt? model then? Okay, you're going to get in. So yeah, I mean, I I'll be curious to see where things continue on. You know, for us on these platforms, I would not be surprised if I'm not going to say that they're going to go away, but if like they diminish in mm -hmm. importance, because th what it really comes down to is there's limited supply. Period. There's only so much of fill in the blank. So, like, if there's only so much economy for the globe mm -hmm. and you're, like, wanting a piece of it, do you know what I mean? Like, like you're only going to get so much. And we in America, I think, have really twisted our concepts of potential because we always put people on pedestals that have, like, astronomically beat the odds and risen above but we don't really kind of frame it that way. We're just like, oh my God, like they're so popular. Everybody knows who they are. They're a celebrity. You know what I mean? Like so many people look to, to look to whoever and like think that, well, because they made it, because they achieved this, anybody can. Mm. And I'm not trying to be a, you know, an ass about this and poo poo it. I'm just being, I think, realistic and saying, yes, technically anybody can do that. But mm -hmm. there's a ton of circumstances that have to come together for that opportunity to be met. Like, that's why, you know, a podcast I listen to, they kind of always ask the question, like, how much do you think, like, this happening for you was luck versus, like, talent, mm. skill, perseverance, whatever. And more often than not, these individuals say it's about being in the right place at the right time with the right attitude like yeah. with the proper preparation and and i think that that's key as to when people can be successful so for these platforms i think it's quite possible that you could you know have a good you know side hustle or perhaps an entire mode of income mm -hmm. from them i just don't know how likely that is on, on yeah. a statistical basis i mean jeff you rattling off all the numbers it's impressive, and I'm like, great. So they've already given out like two billion, but like, how much does that really kind of shake down to? You know, yeah. Like, it, I, I think what we've been talking, like, one of the things we had talked about was the oversaturation. You mm -hmm. know, like everybody and their mama, well, their daddy maybe, um, has an only has an OnlyFans or a Just Friends or something like that nowadays. Um, I remember randomly coming across someone's profile on Twitter. And I like they like I shared I happened to share their picture and it had, didn't really have anything mentioned about them being on OnlyFans, but I shared a picture and like within minutes, I got a um, message from the person like saying, hey, like, thanks for sharing, you know, re retweeting my my post. Um, if you want to see more, if you're interested in more, like check out my OnlyFans or my Jester fans and. You know, I'll have all this stuff up, and I'm like, that's great, but, like, that's not what I'm here for. You know, I didn't, I just, I liked the pictures, and I was sharing it to show the people that follow me, which, and the whole lot. Right, but it, like, was, it was a promotional tool. Yeah. It's like he sees and, somebody retweeted, he's going to personally message them, saying, hey, yeah. if you like that. Um, I had right. that happen with another guy, um... And I was a little, I actually blocked them because I, it, it, cause it honestly felt like someone was selling, you know, something to me. It was a solicitation almost. At least that's what it felt yeah. like to me. Yeah. Cause it, within a moment, within minutes of like doing something, I'm like, okay, like, 
I, I, unless that's something you maybe have automatically set up where if someone reblogs a post, like you, if that's something you can do, I don't know. But like you, you so. get a get a get a get a message from that person. I'm like, that yes, that sounds like a lot. I doubt that's something that could be a thing, but could it be? Maybe I don't know. Maybe um, somebody was focusing on promoting their OnlyFans. Who knows? Yeah. And again, I don't. I think the issue for me is like I mentioned it before is like over saturation, too many people, and that's where I'm concerned with like this making money for people. Mm-hmm. Some and people. some people, as I said, I it's the top one percent is making thirty three percent of the money. Yeah, but that's a lot. That's not a lot of people on the site that are making a whole lot of money. If the average was like one forty five, you said a month, it was it was less than one forty five. A lot of or no, the average was like one sixty something, but most were getting mm-hmm. less than one forty. Yeah, so like, I mean that's that's something, but still, and who knows like what the higher top tier people that one percent are making in this platform, and versus the person who probably just signed up and maybe has like a subscriber or two or three, you know, but they all would count in the grander scheme of the algorithms and money and whatever. So <sighs> at the yeah. end of the day, I'm not, I, I, it's I, a, just another I would platform. probably support. Yeah. It's another platform. And I agree that I don't know how long it's going to be quote unquote popular. You know, is this what people are going to start doing now to make money? And is it worth it? You know, like the thing that usually bought that used to bother me a lot, and it often bothers me in any kind of like amateur porn kind of situation is, um, I, I, I when you start like teasing and mugging for the camera. Like, it stops becoming, like, a natural, like, physical, you know, you know, attraction, physical reaction kind of thing happening. And it becomes you making content for the sake of making content. And mm-hmm. it, it, it becomes a performance almost. And that's, I think, my other concern. Like, if I, like, I'll, 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 I mean, we've, we've used West enough times today. I will use him again. Um it's there are moments during some of Wes Wes's Wes anyway his um, videos and such where he's you know he's obviously performing he's putting on the show for the sake of of what he's doing but he has a good way of almost getting lost in the performance where he's not just like mugging at the camera and just looking at the camera. And sometimes because he's, even if it's just him joke, stroking himself off, um, he's, you can tell that he is enjoying what he's doing, even if he is doing it to himself. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of what I would want to see. Like I have seen many people um, that, are porn actors are want to be porn actors that are so caught up in looking right or looking good or looking like it's the best thing in the world that it loses that realism it's when those, and then it just be- because it's an open platform it's going to be one of those things where where you're going to get the good and the bad and and then it's just about you know supply and demand essentially except this is for how people are performing if somebody's not performing well they can either try to get better or maybe this is just isn't their belly wick and <laughs> maybe it's time to move into something else speaking of moving to something else i think it's also moving to close out the show are there any other questions? Nope. I think we're good. And with that, yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I don't have an endless supply of income to be able to support everybody that needs it. So, yeah, <laughs> I mean, and that's always going to be the case. Pick yeah. and choose. 
In any case, that's the end. Oh. Plenty of ways to contact us. Pop over to our website. Comes out a lot at com. Shoot us an email. It comes out a lot at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail, sexy or otherwise. Tell me how my raspy voice, because I haven't actually really been talking very much at all for the past several days, uh, is by going to uh, uh, 361C. I'll we'll talk. That's 361-265-8255. You can find us on various social media outlets, including Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and YouTube at Cubs Outlaw in the appropriate place of the URL. You can join our entourage chat at tinyrail.com slash telegram dash col. Uh, or subscribe to our Google Calendar to find out when we're planning and recording these things. Uh, that's at tinyroll.com slash calendar dash col. Uh, you can get various accoutrements such as, now here's your sticky, here's your cookie shirt, or a consent is my foreplay shirt in various different styles. Um, all at zazzle.com slash cubs out loud. Uh, you can also become a patron at patreon.com uh, slash cubs out loud for a little a buck a month. Um, you can also, if you just want to send us a one-time donation, uh, you can do that at paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. You can raise on Apple Podcasts, uh, Google Play, Spotify, uh, Amazon, and Audible, um, and pretty much any other podcasting platform. You can find me anywhere on the internet. It's box at box, probably box com, box something or other, or Windjum, W-Y-N-D-G-E-M, uh, on Twitch, where I've been streaming a bunch of Final, Final Fantasy fourteen and killing my D and D party. Damon. Womp womp. Um, <laughs> if you wish to find me, you can find me at Theater Cup Seven Nine on most bear related sites. Are on Facebook. Or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. If you would like to find me, you can pretty much uh, find an account most places online for me under GareBear73. That's G-A-R-B-E-A-R-7-3. And just so everybody knows, if you made it to this part of the episode, we're going to be on hiatus next week because it's Memorial Day weekend. So yeah. we're going to have a flashback episode. Flashback. Did we, did we decide flashback. which episode we were flashing back to? I totally forgot. Yeah. Yep. Everything's been done. Okay. We That's already done done that. <laughs> well that's why it's a flashback actually actually if it's what i remember it was i i don't think you two were even involved either of you was it was that that one no okay unless we changed yeah. anyway we'll talk about it post show okay with that take it everybody <laughs> good night everybody